So good day, everyone. My name is Brian Proffitt, welcoming you to another edition of Community Central. Really excited about uh, today's uh, topic, and we'll get to that in just a second. But the usual housekeeping notes for those of you who are new to Community Central, we will have a Q&A uh, portion of the program after our panelists have had a chance to kind of go into their project and discuss it a little bit, and maybe show it off. Um, when that happens, we'll, we'll read your, your questions to the panel um, in the uh, order of most voted. So definitely use the Q&A tool, put your questions in there and vote on the ones you most want to hear about and we'll get to those later in the session. So without any further ado, I'm pleased to have with us four members of the Red Hat Community Gaming of Practice. We're going to be talking about a really cool new project that Red Hat has launched recently called the Red Hat Arcade. So gentlemen, I think it's probably going to be better if I let you all introduce yourself. So Derek, can you start off and let everybody know who you are, what you're about? Hey, I'm Derek Reese. I'm a principal engineer on the DXP team working under the DAT umbrella there. And I am one of the members of the gaming COP. Roddy? Hey, Roddy Kiley here, uh, Principal Software Engineer with the Messaging Engineering Team. Um, also a member of the Gaming COP. Hey, Jared. Hey, uh, Jared here. I'm a Principal Software Engineer on the Red Hat Digital Experience. And, and Eric. Hello, I'm Eric Jacobs. I am a Senior Manager on the Cloud Platforms Technical technical marketing team, and obviously the least intelligent of everybody on this call today. Oh, well, thank you. Well, I'm sure that's not true, because I'm here, so it's all good. Um, so we'll get started, because I'm really, you know, I'm, I'm very excited. I even wore my, my Zelda Breath of the Wild Starry Night shirt, so I'm in the groove here. So let's talk about a little bit about what, what the gaming community of practice is all about because that is, you know, Red Hat is not something you think about necessarily when we think about gaming. So um, if one of you can kind of get us started and kind of explain why did the COP sort of come about in the first place? Well, for one, to solve that problem. <laughs> okay. Sure. Um, yeah, so I can talk a little bit about how the COP kind of came around. Uh, Ruth Seeley and a couple of us other people have been very active in conversations around gaming. There's a, a lot of people already doing a whole bunch of work at Red Hat. You know, Jared and, and uh, Roddy and Eric have been working through all sorts of different angles. And we realized that there was a really strong community that already existed here that had a lot of expertise, that had even real industry experience and could be brought to the table to help with some of the opportunities that we felt maybe that we were missing with some of our clients. I'm going to hand it off to Jared to talk a little bit about some of the stuff that kind of happened up until the gaming COP was formed. Yeah, sure. So for the past, uh, I don't know, probably four years or so, um, we have had more and more opportunities to use gaming as a way of um, telling our story, I guess, to, to people. Um, it started out really at Summit, uh, where we wanted to have fun, interactive booths for people to come um, and play a game and maybe at the same time learn about something related to Red Hat. Um, for example, we made a, a game about the Red Hat customer portal called Engage, and you would move this portal around on a monitor by waving your hand over a Leap controller. Um, that's just one example. And then uh, and then there were other things like the, the Command Line Hero Arcade, like Command Line Hero is a podcast that Red Hat produces, and um, they wanted to have a fun uh, game in their booth, so we made these uh, arcade cabinets. We made a, a game called Command Line Heroes Bash for that, where you just enter as many Linux commands as you can think of in 60 seconds as fast as possible and uh, try to get the high score. and that um, that was you know really popular. People really had fun with it. You wouldn't think it would be fun, but 
that actually is really fun when you play it. Um, so that is like, so I guess that's kind of background. That's kind of over like the past four years or so. We've had many t- opportunities to create games at events and then also like really cool visualizations and demos at like keynotes and stuff um, that involve animation and games and stuff like that. So, um, and then, and then Roddy, like the most recent one that we did custom um, was a pod escape for a, uh, that was supposed to be at, at summit 2020. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, and, 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 uh, IBM think, um, and, uh, but then it, went, it ended up going virtual, but, um, so these were like all the games we've, we've made over the, the past. And then, then we kind of, um, joined up with Derek and people on, and Ruth, um, and became part of the gaming COP. And now we have both like internal game development that we do at Red Hat for Red Hat specific projects and stuff, mostly events. Uh, and then, and then also using our expertise, like Derek said, to help out, you know, our clients in the gaming industry or opportunities that we might have, um, with uh, Red Hat in that industry. So. Yeah. So. I'll yeah. just jump in there. Um, so as Jared was alluding to, like there's a lot of experience and talent from the game industry here at Red Hat and people ranging from indies who are interested and maybe trying to get their first game created um, and completed to people who have, you know, years of actual experience in shipping AAA titles. So the whole reason that I'm here is basically because Jared reached out to, to a mailing list and said, hey, we need some group of people create this thing for Summit, uh, an edutainment title to kind of use gaming as a vehicle for teaching people about Kubernetes and OpenShift. Is there anybody out there with those kinds of skills? Um, Because I think, you know, Jared and the number of people that were already involved were pretty heavily taxed because, as we know, people here are tend to be pretty busy. Um, So a bunch of us said, hey, yeah, you know, we have those skills. Um, And so I think basically a little process went by where the events team and Jared uh, presented to us saying, this is our vision. This is like what we would like to see. And Jared could actually say, well, you know, I've done this before and this is kind of how, how it goes. And so there was a group of us, uh, selected to attend the meeting who seemed to have the right skills. Uh, and as it turned out, in my case, I ended up just kind of being the glue. Um, there were a number of talented people on our team to produce Pod Escape, um, from art, audio, content, uh, Derek did some pitch materials with regards to like a producer's take on it. Uh, I provided some like jumping in and fixing bug stuff. And we had even some like of our solutions architects, uh, doing some back end work. So really it was, it was a, t- a team effort really to bring these things, I think, to a fruition. And from my point of view, um, I had been talking to Ruth Seeley about their, the open source program offices involvement in something called the IGDA. Uh, the International Game Developers Association, which had been, Red Hat had had kind of a foot in the do- door there for a few years. So there was all these kind of moving parts, which each were moving independently to try to use gaming as a vehicle at Red Hat, you know, make Red Hat valuable to the gaming industry, make the gaming industry valuable to Red Hat. And so all these kind of efforts just kind of sort of coalesced. The right people got in the right place at the right time. We were all talking together, and as it turned out, Red, Red Hat already had a vehicle called the community practice to really kind of provide the the way in which we went about taking a spark and hopefully growing it into it and putting an umbrella over it and kind of guiding it down the path. Yeah, and I'll just add, too, that now that we have this, like, known community that people can come to. We're learning about a lot of other stuff we didn't know about before in Red Hat um, related to gaming. Um, like Eric is a perfect example. Like since he knew about the gaming COP, like he came and joined the community because they're doing, they're producing this, uh, the OpenShift TV stuff and they wanted to have some episodes about gaming. So now, you know, the the gaming COP was like the perfect vehicle. And now, like he's really a major part of it. Um, 
and we learn about like every day it seems like i learn about someone someone new some a, a game that they made or are or, or planning on making um and there's a lot of there's a lot of experience there's a lot of people in red hat who um have game development experience or are into gaming in general and the gaming cop has kind of been a good become like a really great community for everyone to gather and talk about all of that related stuff so the, yeah that's all that's really really interesting and i wanted to uh, follow up on something you know a few of you have uh, said in that conversation around that a lot of this is around a technology exchange like for the gaming industry um, and getting them to understand here are the pieces and parts of you know the the software and expertise we have on the technology side but i'm wondering in these exchanges too um you know how how is the conversation going with you know members of the gaming industry around open source because we're aware that there are a lot of players in the gaming industry that are using open source um tools and software and whatnot so I'm curious, like, what's been your experience so far on the open source and the community side when you have these conversations and get these projects going? This is t <laughs> sort of a, a tough Sorry, one to go answer. Ahead, there's, there's definitely some things that we can talk about and that we can't talk about. Mm -hmm. um, Jared, if you could talk a little bit about uh, Open Jam, maybe, and then yeah. Eric, if you want to take the yeah. rest of it. Yeah, I've got the, yeah. the, kind of the business side of the story. So. <laughs> Yeah, I wanted to say that because I actually I forgot to mention um we so we have uh we host at Red Hat a, a game jam specifically meant to pr promote open source in game development, open source games, um open source tools that you can use in any part of the game development process. Um and that's called Open Jam. We have op every year in the fall right before all things open, we We've uh, four years now. I think we've we've held held it. Um, and uh, so that's one of the things like the that the gaming COP is doing to promote open source in gaming, and um, and open source game dev tools. Um, it's you know, it's one of it's definitely one of my passions. Like I really want to make. I would love to make all the world aware of all of these great open source tools related to game development, you know, so the, um, so open jam is like one of the, one of the great ways we can do that. And, um, and it's one of its main goals. Eric, you're muted. muted. Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, on the business side, um, you know, the story is a little bit interesting. So as Brian alluded to, you know, there is a lot of use of open source in gaming. Um, but there's a little bit of what I refer to as the $100 bill cigar problem. And so a lot of these gaming companies have lots of money, especially the ones that are doing really well, your, your AAAs. And um, Red Hat's traditional value proposition is commoditization of open source, making it accessible, um, you know, supported. Uh, it's kind of like an insurance model. You know, we're, we're sort of selling insurance here. Um, that doesn't mean we're doing, it doesn't mean what we do is bad. It's just that's sort of the value proposition. And when you approach somebody who couldn't care less about saving, you know, they're tripping over $100 bills to save pennies, um, they don't, they don't really care about that value proposition to a certain extent. And when your business is founded essentially in a core of building software yourself and, and that is your intellectual property as you see it, you, you get in a, this weird situation where they're not super interested in talking to Red Hat because everything we sell, they're like, oh yeah, we're, we could just build that ourselves. Um, and so the struggle thus far for the most part has been we are lucky if we get into a gaming organization in their traditional IT part of the business. Like, hey, Electronic Arts, you're a customer of ours because you run SAP on RHEL on P-Series, um, not because any game runs on Linux server or client or because you did anything with our messaging or you know our Java or what have you. And so what, what I'm trying to bring to the gaming COP is a little bit of the, the, the business mind of, you know, 
how do we craft a story that's meaningful to these companies who who are tripping over hundred dollar bills to save pennies? Um, how do we adjust our product roadmaps and trajectories to ensure that the things that the gaming companies actually care about are reflected in the features and capabilities of some of our products? And a perfect example, um, UDP for most active games like first person type shooters, multiplayer games, that's the traffic type that they use. They do not use TCP for various reasons, technical. Um, I recently discovered that like UDP is very poorly supported in OpenShift running in the public cloud, but most of these companies that are looking at Kubernetes are running their Kubernetes environments in the public cloud. Um, so this is something where it's like, I, I see this as a problem. I go back to product management and say, look, you know, we need to fix this if we stand any chance of really supporting what the gaming industry is trying to do. And so everybody else, I shouldn't say everybody, you know, Jared, Roddy, and, and Derek are all engineers. We do have other people who are in the sales side of the house and some other things. I'm one of the few who sits in the P&T part of our business, um, which is like the business units, sort of trying to go back and forth between roadmap and customer and product requirements and sort of feature velocity and, and tie some of those things together. No, that's really interesting and, and both great insights. Um, I want to kind of move on a little bit from the COP itself and talk about the the most recent expression of the talent that's going on uh, and coming out of the COP and talk about the Red, Ar Red Hat Arcade. Um, and if one of you can kind of jump in there and 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 talk about how did that come about and and <laughs> what is the Red Hat Arcade? Yeah, I'd, I, I would love I know to talk about that. To take this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so how it came about? Um, it really, uh, to be honest, it it probably wouldn't have come about if it hadn't been for the pandemic. Um, once once the pandemic hit and all events in person are canceled because most of the gaming stuff like i said at the beginning the backstory was around events like interactive booths and stuff like that and and keynotes and whatever um they're like events completely all virtual now so as soon as that happened like immediately like the game roddy was working on pod escape um for summit went virtual so we had to host it online and we made the virtual arcade for for summit 2020 there was a virtual arcade and uh where we put the normal games that we would normally have in person through the event website the pot escape and bash and some of the other open source games we have made in the past um and that was a really it was just it was just a fun thing for attendees to go take a break and play play some games um and have fun at make the virtual event more fun pretty much it's all about fun really um and then uh so that got a lot of traffic really great feedback and right after that we got requests from the linux foundation they wanted it the same arcade in uh open source summit and kubecon and cloud native con and like all of these events and now we're like red hat is sponsoring arcade and all of these events we're putting those games on there and and um so we did that throughout most of 2020 and then in the fall we have this internal celebration at red hat called we are red hat week where it's just a celebration of red hat employees where we play you know we we do fun community games trivia all this stuff and uh red the the organizers of that came to the gaming cop and they're like could we do an arcade for we are red hat week and we're like yeah, of course, because we've been doing that already for all the events, but we needed a place to host it because um, all of the events were hosted on the event websites. So now we need our own hosting for it. So like, okay, where should we put it? We don't want to just put it on some random long host name that is hard to understand. So like, I don't remember who, but someone suggested let's do arcade.redhead.com for it. I'm like, well, that's perfect. So let's just do that. So um so we went through all of the you know all of the, the the legal red tape and stuff to get a new domain registered and approved and all of that stuff so then we got arcade.red.com and hosted it for the internal we are red hat week and people played and earned prizes to get their high score and 
the uh, it was it became a very fun part of the event um, for that week. We had a lot of like thou thousands of plays, right, Roddy? Like over like ten thousand plays on yeah, there's sixteen thousand plays of Potterscape yeah. and eighteen hundred on Pity About Earth. Now that's not reflective <laughs> of their enjoyability, but Pity About Earth you get to play for longer, whereas mm. Potterscape cuts you off at two minutes. Mm. Um, so it's more reflective yeah. of the timeline. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, so, and that's internal to Red Hat alone, right? So they were very, like, well received. People enjoyed it. And, um, during the event, we were thinking, well, after this, we got the people asking, are we going to be able to play these after we are Red Hat week? And we're like, well, we should really just make this a permanent thing. So that is when we decided, okay, arcade.red.com, we're going to make it external. We're going to like remove everything that was Red Hat specific for the event, like the the high, the, the leaderboard, the high scores and stuff, um, and just share it because, like like we said in um, in the blog post we made, um, that like the open source way is to share things, right? So why not just share this with everybody, right? There's no reason not to. Plus, it kind of helps with our goals of one of our goals, which is promoting open source tools and game development. And all of the games on the arcade are written in open source engines and open source tools to create. And, and all the games themselves are open source. So, um, it, uh, so that, that whole thing is the backstory. That's how the arcade.red.com came about. Um, yeah, that's the story. Excellent. That's really cool. Well, that seems like a good jump in to, um, if you can, um, give us a real quick demo or, or tour of Red Hat Arcade. I'm sure our viewers would love to uh, get an eye on that if they haven't seen it already. Yeah, and and while I'm demoing this, anybody mm -hmm. who's watching can go ahead and you can go to arcade.red.com if, if you want. You can play it yourself. Um, so... Let me share screen. There you go. All right, you got it. All mm -hmm. right, first, first, I want to uh, give a shout out to Michael Clayton who made this really cool um, loading animation of these cards kind of flying in. Um, he's a front end wizard. Um, so Michael Clayton is actually a major part of the the gaming COP and all of these games, but he was not able to attend today, but. Um, so the, this is the, the home page right now. Um, we just have, uh, these cards here. Um, each game has a, a button that you can play instantly and all of the games are web-based. So none of them require you to download or, in, or install anything or install any plugins. Like it all runs in the browser, which is really nice. You just click the button and, and it, and it loads immediately. So, um, so like I'll, I'll show pod escape here. Um, which great job on the team. This game is a lot of fun. So, <laughs> um, let's give it a, I don't know. So it's, it's like a platformer, you would call it. You're a pod, like trying to escape from getting killed. Um, I don't know what these, these things are supposed to be. Probably like firewalls. Uh, firewalls. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so now I'm dead. Um, so that's Pod Escape, and I, I probably won't go through and show every single game. Everybody can can click and play. But the other thing I wanted to, to point out was each of these has a contribute button, which still links directly to its GitHub repo, and pull pro, pull requests are always welcome. So um, please, like, don't hesitate if you want to add a feature or something, or want or or find a bug you that needs to be fixed. Um, Go ahead and contribute. Like I would love to like see that. I would really love to see that. Um, the other one I'll mention is, or one like multiplayer game here is Zorbio, which is um, you know all. And I would point out all of these are running on OpenShift dedicated, the OpenShift four. Um, Eric helped a ton when it came to getting all of these games deployed in their own. Um, in their own pods with all the routing and, and everything set up so that the, uh, you know, everything is all wired together properly and 
builds are made, deploys are made, and everything works seamlessly. And it's very easy to, you know, add new new features, do builds, deploy, and it just shows up really fast. So the whole platform is great. Um, so this is this is Orbio. I don't know if it's it's a multiplayer game. So if anybody is watching the stream and playing, I might actually see your name in the leaderboard right now. <laughs> um, but this is like an eat, eat, eating game where you it's like a Garia one. It just got it just got eight by a player. So if if player three 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 is on the stream, you, good job killing me. <laughs> uh, okay, so I think that's. I think that's pretty good for the demo. Um, one thing I'll, I'll mention is we designed this to be expandable. So as you can see, we have five games here now, but you know we're definitely this is just the base set. Well, we are definitely going to add more. Um, we already have one in the works called Space Rings Things, which is part of the, the Twitch TV series that we talked about earlier, which is also going to be a multiplayer game, um, and then. I wanted to mention too that I I'm on the hunt for for good games from Red Hatters. I found I discovered one uh, from a, a guy uh, named Saad, uh, Saad. I think he's um, he actually re submitted a game to JS 13K Jam, and he works at Red Hat, and it got very like high. It got in the top ten, and there's a lot of games that get submitted to that, but it's the whole game is less than 13 kilobytes and it's a WebGL game and it's a puzzle game and it's awesome. And so expect to see that game showing up here if I can find him and he'll give me permission to, to do it. But, um, so I'm coming, I'm coming for that. So I'll, just so you know, but yeah, so that is, that's pretty much it for the demo. Thank you very much, Jared. It looks fantastic. Um, and with that, I think it's a probably a good time to kind of jump into the Q&A. We've got a few, quite a few questions that have rolled in. The first one um, is from Justin, who basically says, and this got a lot of votes, a lot of people are interested in the gaming uh, COP. So what's the best way for them to get involved? Well, yeah, if they're internal to Red Hat, um, you know, course it's open to everyone at Red Hat to participate mm -hmm. and it's it's one of those things where you know we're supporting industry verticals we're consulting on calls so we have a source page we have an internal wiki page um, that I think has been linked out previously where you can find our mailing list you can find our weekly uh, strategy calls uh, you can find our Google chat and all of our other internal resources and tools that are available uh, if you are external to Red Hat, get in touch with your sales rep. They will be able to reach out to us and get us in on a call with you and help you collaborate and work through the problem space that you're looking at. And then let me let me follow up with that, Derek, a little bit too. You know, Jared had mentioned that, you know, a lot of these things are open source and out there. You know, for people who might not be interested in a business connection with Red Hat and more, more interested in the community development side, um, you know, is there an open repo or organization out there where they can come in and kind of contribute to the Red Hat Arcade, as Jared had mentioned, or be involved in other ways? Uh, Jared, well, all, if you want to talk all of, about it. Uh, yes. Yeah. So a couple of things. Um, when there is the entire gaming COP has an org and GitHub called Red Hat Game Dev. All of the all of the gaming created stuff is in there. So that is open to the public. Like anyone outside of Red Hat could come and contribute to get involved in those games. Um, and in fact, SRT was like, we I think we usually put out a call for that. And we even have like a community channel, an external community channel to talk about on, on Discord, to talk about that specifically. Um, um, but then, and then also internally, people who want to get involved in maybe the more game development side of things and haven't created a game before but want to try, um, Open Jam is probably is going to be by far the best uh, thing to do that. And like I said, that starts in the fall. And what Open Jam is, is you you it's in one weekend you make a game based on a theme using open source tools. So it kind of forces you to... Well, it gives you an it, it makes it easy for if you're intimidated or you've always wanted to make a game but 
maybe were intimidated by the size of it. It it helps because it limits the scope because there's a theme, and um, it gives you a time limit. So you you don't have to like invest a ton of time. It's just it's a one weekend event, and then and then it's over. So it's a great way to like get involved and and then you know or if you're a very experienced game dev and you want to make an awesome game and game jam, you'll definitely get noticed by us. Like and maybe even your game would get pulled into the into the arcade arcade.com. So, um, so that is a I think that that is another way of uh, people who want to get involved in the gaming COP. And I appreciate it. Yeah, thank yeah. you for addressing both sides of that coin. And we for everyone here, we will definitely have the appropriate links um, in the video source for people who are watching this recording later. So uh, stay tuned for those and check those links out, both for people in Red Hat and those of you from the public who are watching today. So we'll move on to the next question from Eric. Um, and I think this is something we can touch on. He, he asks, with the advent of virtual streaming services for gaming like Stadia, Nvidia Shield, et cetera, how can Red Hat provide digital solutions to these or similar service providers? How are we driving the future of gaming as a distributed service? Uh, Eric, if you want to take that one, if you're comfortable. Yeah, so this, this ties very directly back to the sort of business level conversation that, that I mentioned earlier. Um, and so if we go through that list, right, uh, let's see, why can I not? Ah, here we go. So, uh, Stadia, that's Google, right? Yeah, they're not they're not buying anything from us, right? They're definitely like the epitome of build everything themselves. Yeah, uh, Nvidia, uh, they don't really they partner with us on a lot of things, but like they have a lot of people at Nvidia that work on Kubernetes stuff, so they're they're also unlikely to be buying anything from us in mass. And so, as you go on down that list of the companies that are doing these things, like whether they're providing gaming as a service, streaming, like underpinning backends. So another example is um, the company behind either Unity or Unreal, but you know, they offer lots of hosted services that are SaaS solutions that gaming developers can use, like built-in messaging to add chat to your game, or you know, player, uh, sorry, server uh, scheduling uh, and things like that. Like, again, these are companies that were steeped in software development, so they just build everything themselves. Um, and so, you know, the specific question, how are we driving the future of gaming as a distributed service? Like, we're not directly with product, but the places that Red Hat does interesting things, like work that we do upstream in Kubernetes, work that we do upstream with Artemis and, and messaging, work that we do upstream in, you know, the, the Linux kernel uh, and et cetera, right? Uh, those are things that are indirectly driving the future of gaming as a distributed service, but you know, Red Hat has yet to really capitalize on those financially in any in any large way. Okay, great. Yeah, thank you for uh, answering that question. Sure. So I'll go to the one from Iqute. I if I sorry if I mangled that name. Does the community include gamification, which is not generally considered as gaming, but frequently shares the same context as both are related to many common things like psychology and sociology and things like that. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Um, and I'll, I'll let Roddy take the second half of this. Uh, the first half of it though is we're already doing that. We already help provide those type of consultancy services and expertise. And the big area that we've already seen realizations and gains is in some of our efforts to interact with kids and the education community. So we have a, a number of different efforts at Red Hat where we reach out through the K through 12 initiatives and organizations and help build out curriculum and experiences to help uh, kids get involved in STEM and STEAM and look at you know where their future it lies with robotics or programming or other areas where Red Hat can really come in and, and make a, a real difference. Roddy, if you want to take the second half. Yeah, and with regard to the actual like boots on the ground, people in the trenches kind of development efforts on the gamification front, we do have some of that ongoing here as well. 
Um, we've been trying to set up a time actually for them to give some demos for us about their work, but it just hasn't happened so far. But I think there should be some news on that front before too long. Okay. Well, and and speaking of educational um, opportunities, the next question from Muhammad says, do we have games for young people in order to spark their interest for IT since, you know, in their early ages? And you alluded to, we have programs like this. CoLab certainly is one of them, Eric. Um, and again, uh, something that Ruth Seeley, who is part of the gaming COP, she is also involved with that. But Eric, can you sort of uh, address the efforts around CoLab and how the gaming COP is working with them? I probably can't. Maybe, maybe Derek can. I, I just uh, know that we're doing it. I haven't been very involved in it. Or Jared, yeah, I think you I, were actually more involved in it. Yeah, yeah. With, okay. Of course, Ruth was the most involved, but without right. her being here, I can talk a little bit about. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we were, um, and the, we, there was another another guy, um, Red Hat, um, who made a really cool um, microservices based adventure game builder that runs on OpenShift, and um, it was adapted to uh, be uh, an adventure game based on a collab um, booklet where they had to like these young kids had to escape from a basement and like solve puzzles and stuff. And they, uh, so Ruth and, and Ozzy, this, the, the other guy who built that, um, did a lot of work to adapt that for CoLab so that they could learn more about, learn more about game development, learn more about IT, learn more about coding in general. Um, and so that is, yeah. So I, I think that's the short answer. Um, and as much as I know, they could give more detail, but it definitely was a way that we were trying to help um, educate kids about coding and IT and and uh, tech using games. Yeah, and I had an opportunity to beta help beta test that, and it was really a cool uh, game and a neat presentation by that team. Okay, so we'll move on. Um, so John asks, what are the profiles of games you you want recommendations on? Recommendations and what? It, yeah, um, I, 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 I'm, I, I'm not yeah, sure if you can recommendations for contributions or things like that. Like as you go. All right, through. as far as maybe recommendations to be included in the arcade. Um, mm -hmm. Number one, of course, is open source, right? That's the first thing we're looking for is completely open source, you know, from the ground up, no proprietary things. So uh, stuff like OpenSage, where it's meant to run like a proprietary format and it's just a recreation, wouldn't really be a good fit for us. Um, but stuff that's made completely from the scratch and in open source, and especially for the web specifically, are great fits. If you're a Red Hatter and you've got a, you know, an indie game and you're thinking about and just open sourcing it and putting it out there on the web, uh, that would be an amazing fit. If you're not a Red Hatter and you're still working on some sort of open source game and you want to collaborate with the community, like absolutely, yes, uh, we're on the GitHub you know, organization there, reach out to us. And that'd be something we'd love to have a conversation about. Yeah, and then um, I guess when it comes to some base level criteria for stuff on the arcade, um, um, in addition to the things um, Derek just mentioned, uh, it needs it can't have a lot of backend resources since we are uh, we are using donated community infrastructure, which I should actually call out the uh, the, uh, the um, open source program office and their community infrastructure team very generously lets the arcade run on their stuff free of charge, <laughs> uh, which is an awesome service that they're providing to us. And uh, so any games on there need to be fa fairly lightweight, you know, like they can't use too much memory or, or CPU or bandwidth. So client side JavaScript games or, or, or at least uh, built and then exported to run in the web are the best. Okay, so we are just about coming up on time and we have time for one more question. From Glenn, and this is a pretty good send-off question. Um, so thanks for this one. Where does Red Hat want to position itself within the gaming community in the long term? 
I think this might be a good one for Eric to take. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, look, Red Hat is essentially a infrastructure solutions provider. You know, we we are a hybrid cloud company. We have everything from virtualization to containerization to security, configuration management, you know, application runtimes and more. And so really the goal, my, my view on what Red Hat's goal should be, uh, you know, is essentially we want to be providing these gaming companies with the tools and infrastructure solutions they need so that they can focus more on delivering their IP, which is a game, and less on DIY Kubernetes distributions to then run their games on top of, right? And and in a weird way, like, this is the same thing that we try to do for everybody, right? It's not, it, this isn't a unique value proposition or a unique vision for gaming. This is the Red Hat value proposition for, for all companies, right? Whether they're in healthcare, financial services, or whatever, you know, unless you are a company whose business is building and selling Kubernetes, which is basically Red Hat, uh, why do you devote so much of your business to building and operating Kubernetes, right? So, you know, again, our vision is really, we already do these things great. Uh, let us do them for you so that you can focus on the things that you do great, which is, you know, making awesome games. All right, excellent. And with that, I think we are good to go for this episode of Community Central. Gentlemen, thank you so much for coming on and talking about the efforts around Red Hat Arcade and the Red Hat Gaming uh, Community of Practice. Thank you. Thanks for having us, Brian. Thank you. Yeah. A lot of fun. All right. Okay. And with that, we're going to wrap this episode of Community Central up. Thank you all so much for your participation in the chat and the Q&A. Um, we will be sending all of the unanswered questions to the panelists and they can answer them directly. So don't worry if we didn't get to your question today. So until next time, thank you so much for joining and have a great and safe day. Mm -hmm. Bye, everybody.